Mr. Sibyl, thank you so much for speaking to Hindustan Times. I want to ask, start by asking you, what did you make and for you, what was the import of the High Court judgment today, sir? I'm shocked. Totally shocked. It's, uh, you know, obviously the High Court has no regard for precedent. There's a five-judge judgment of the Supreme Court which says that the proceedings before the Speaker, till the Speaker decides on the disqualification petition, are proceedings within the House. They are proceedings in the Assembly. And therefore, no court can pass any orders, can pass any protective order, uh, 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 those against whom the disqualification petitions are pending. That's the decision of five judges of the Supreme Court, not my decision. It's a decision that was taken, rendered way back in 1990 in Kyoto Holohan, where I was also a counsel. I argued before the Constitution bench. Uh, myself and Mr. Nariman and, one of, and Mr. Jesh Malani were on one side and others on the other side. So um, so that's the judgment of the Supreme Court, and that's uh, binding on every court. Uh, now, if the High Court says that the I grant status quo, then obviously the High Court uh, uh, has, has uh, not followed precedent. Not only that, it's... Uh, it's a sad day in the history of judiciary in this country that uh, that lawyers feel uh, disheartened, not for anything else, but that uh, that 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 institutional authorities, if they do not uh, give respect uh, to judgments of courts, then it's certainly a very sad day for this country. But so when when the other side points out that by just speaking against or pointing out the faults of the chief minister, that doesn't amount to I mean, I mean, you are you're talking about the rights of the speaker, but they point out the fact that Sachin Pilot and the other MLAs never are speaking against Congress party. They're speaking against an individual. And by that, it's not an anti-party activity. How, how do you respond to that? So again, 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 I don't understand. How do you know that that's the case? Hmm. How do you, Sunitra, how do you know that that's the case? I you get the disqualification petition? Hmm. It's a public, it's a matter of public record. The disqualification petition is filed by Mahesh Joshi. It's about three or four pages. It gives all the grounds. It sets out what the fears are, right? And it is nothing to do with what you're saying. Nothing to do with what you're saying. So if at least the media, when it when it when it displays this in the public domain, should know what the facts are. Many of them went and said that we want a trust vote to be held. Now, if you are a member of the party and you owe allegiance to the party and you are ne never not, not left the party, then what is the trust vote you want to hold? These very legislators. Then why do we want to Haryana? You are staying in a hotel in Haryana, which is not a Congress state. And you are being protected by the Haryana police and the CRPF. What has that got to do with what you are saying? All that is set out there. Now, the point is not that. The point is of jurisdiction. It's assuming you say that you are only you are only criticizing the leader, then you come and say to the speaker that I am criticizing the leader. Issue is jurisdictional. Till the speaker decides on all those issues, the court cannot pass an order. That's the, that's the law of this country. I hope you are, you appreciate what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Yeah. And sir, these scenes that we are witnessing today, sir, uh, would you, I, I want to put, I want you to try and, I mean, respond to this with your senior Rajya Sabha MP hat, uh, sir, is that, what would you say the other side, you know, we, we're also, as spectators, we're also quite amazed by, uh, you know, what the CM is saying. He has spoken in unusual <laughs> language about uh, the other leader, the deputy chief, former deputy chief minister. So as a Rajya Sabha MP and a senior leader, Mr. Sibyl, what would you say about that, sir? You know, like we are hearing words like Nikamma, Nikara. Today we heard him, heard the CM talk about the fact that, you know, we will have, uh, he, he talked about uh, that everyone from the, the public will come and Gherao the Raj Bhavan. Uh, what do you make of this language, sir, which is being criticized by uh, people well, in Delhi? Let me tell you this, you know, for example, I mean, I, I, I remember Gandhi's days and I remember the days of the British Raj and when the when the when when the, the powers that be never listen to the freedom fighters, right? 
and then ultimately what did Gandhi do? He helped Dharma. What did our national leaders do? They helped Dharma. So Dharma is not some uncivilized uh, behavior by people uh, before authorities who uh, you throw the rule of law out of the window. So as far as Dharma is concerned, I don't think there's any problem there. As far as language is concerned, uh, I, you know, basically, I think every person uses the language that he wishes to use. I don't want to comment on that. But perhaps you may not have, uh, you know, uh, any knowledge or any information about what's been happening in the past within the state and what actions have been taken by certain people. And that, I guess, the chief minister is privy to. And in the course of that, uh, you know, uh, in that state he may have said something. But I think that, uh, that the media should not, should look at the issue and not look at words. What is the issue here? A man says he's a member of the Congress party. And yet the man says that I and my people will not go to meetings of the Congress party. Right? I think it's ununderstandable. Here is a man who became a member of parliament uh, in his 20s. Right? And then in 2004 uh, to 2009, he was a member of parliament. Then in 2009, he, he, before he was, you know, in his early 30s, he became a minister. In the government, right? In the central government, he was my minister in telecom. Then uh, he lost in 2014. Then when the Rajasthan Assembly elections took place, he became the deputy chief minister at the age of 38. And then he had five to six portfolios with him. Now, the, the question is that obviously, uh, if then he says he's a congressman and he's unhappy, what is he unhappy about? I think, is this an unhappy journey to this car? That he should be unhappy with? Is this an unhappy journey? <laughs> Does, can he have any grievances? I want to know from you. Which <laughs> member of the Congress party has ever got what he has got <laughs> at this young age? Right? So, so, so he must be very unhappy of an unfulfilled dream <laughs> that at least I don't understand. I'm 72 years old. I don't understand. So, sir, have you also looked at the, have you also had a change of perspective, sir? Because it was your tweet, I remember, which alarmed everyone by saying, here's Mr. Sibyl, who is, you know, a very senior member of the party. And even he is concerned about Sachin Pilot being I'm unhappy. When, I'm concerned. Yeah. I am concerned. Why do you say I'm not concerned? I am concerned. I am concerned at the manner in which, uh, you know, what is happening in the Congress. And I have said that publicly. And I think that these, these issues should be resolved, you know, much earlier. But, you know, sometimes we have people who don't want to resolve these issues. I'm not talking in favor of A or in favor of B. See, I'm a congressman at heart. I'm not for it against somebody. I'm for the Congress party. I'm for the ideology. I'm for what it stands for. And I'm hurt when, when things like this happen to the only opposition party at the national level that can actually fight this. This, uh, this government, uh, which is running roughshod over people and destroying the very, I mean, changing the very definition of democracy. That's what I'm upset about. And I'm upset with my party also. That's oh. not the issue, but... You, you're upset I, about... See, could I'm you could elaborate on that, sir? I'm very forthright in my opinion. Yes. See, I, you know, I am, see, I am wedded to the party. I've never in my life leave this party and leave this ideology. But you are upset with them. I am upset with everybody. I am more upset with this government than my party. I understand. Sir, uh, uh, they, are, they are destroying the very foundations of our democratic system. Every institution is captured. So when you hear the governor of Rajasthan saying that he has to think about whether pandemic conditions are suitable to call a session. Do you think that that's, and you know, the uh, other side, I, I spoke with uh, Mr. Rodki before speaking with you, sir. Their side is that uh, it's the prerogative of the governor to decide when to call the session. Can you contest also, that? That is also governed by the, that's also governed by Nadam Tuki's judgment, Arunachal Pradesh judgment. Government, the governor has no discretion in the matter. I see. There's no discretion in the matter. If the government wants to call the session on, why is he not calling the session? What's the problem? Pandemic, Mr. he says. Mr. Mr. One second. What pandemic? What pandemic? When in March the Madhya Pradesh session was call, was called in March, there was no pandemic. In March there was no pandemic. Today government offices are working in Delhi 
Uh, even even in there, even there. And if you don't want to call the session because of pandemic, then have it through video conferencing. What's the problem? I mean, you can have any excuse not to call the session. Final question, sir. Where do you see this going? Uh, because Supreme Court wants to take up a larger issue. Uh, where, do, how do you see this resolving see, itself? I, see, I am not concerned so much as to where litigation is going. I am more concerned with where the country is going. Every elected government in this country is going to be toppled by the BJP. By virtue of their money power and by virtue of other forms of persuasion. This government believes that democracy means that everybody and all institutions must fall in line and agree with what they say. Otherwise, we'll do A, B and C to you. And we've seen this happening. Young people are being prosecuted, persecuted, sedition cases against people, sedition cases against journalists, killing of journalists, the kind of, the kind of uh, you know, uh, deaths are taking that, that people are being killed for which Supreme Court is also ordering an inquiry now. Uh, two days murder. Uh, you know, this kind of thing. What is happening in our country? People protest and then young people are being, uh, you know, uh, uh, forced to defend themselves uh, and sent to jail for protesting. What, what, where is, where, where are, the, where, where are the principles on the basis of which we, we made this nation? I'm more concerned about that. I'm not concerned about the you the people. Uh, you remember the the, the, the ADM Jabalpur? Yes. Right? Uh, see what happened years later. People realized. So years later, people will realize that these six years were the darkest days, perhaps in some institution. People will realize that. I'm not so concerned about that. It's a battle for principles of of that that are the foundation of this nation. I'm more concerned with that. And so, do you think that there is any um, any scope now for such an pilot uh, and reproachment? I have no idea. Have no idea. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking with us, Mr. Sibyl. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.